Solid 4 out of 10. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to another Dayton Dissects. It's been quite a while since we sat down to dissect basically any video game at all, so I'm super excited to be doing it again. And what's even more exciting is that this is our very first dissection of a Switch title. Because yeah, I got, I got a Switch and stuff, and now I'm getting promotional emails for like Switch games. Which is pretty cool. I don't know how they read my mind and, and realized that I got one. The botnet is real on the internet, I guess. So, uh, I got an email. They're like, hey, you want to have a look at the Eternal Castle Remastered? And I'm like, well, I didn't play the first one, but yeah, I'll take a look at this one. And I definitely enjoyed my time with it, although not quite as much as I expected. I expected a lot, like, based on the visuals, but once I got in, the gameplay ended up feeling kind of shallow and stuff like that. It's a super short game. The visuals were probably the most stunning part of it, but I suppose we will get into all that when we jump into the review right now. So, The Eternal Castle Remastered. Do you remember this game? This good old game, apparently from 1987? Does it get your nostalgia muscle pumping and jumping? Well, if you said yes, then you're probably lying. You're, you're just a big fat liar, and I'm gonna be honest, you don't gotta lie to kick it, my dude. Dayton does, welcomes all creeds and colors, except liars and thieves and the Dutch. Which are basically like both of those things combined. I mean, that's a joke, probably. I don't actually know any Dutch people, so like that hypothesis is still up in the air. Anyways, what was I talking about? Alright, the Eternal Castle Remastered. So like I said, it isn't actually a remaster. But I gotta admit that that's a pretty ingenious marketing gimmick. How well did it work? Well... I'm talking about it right now, if that counts for anything. I mean, I'm not really talking about it yet. It's mostly just been one random tangent after another, but that seems to be about par for the course whenever I sit down to make a video these days. Okay, alright. Game face on. So, if you couldn't tell from the footage, the Eternal Castle is a cinematic platformer in the same vein as all those old school cinematic platformers like Prince of Persia, or Another World, or Flashback, and it's overall a genre that I'm pretty fond of. I gotta be honest that I'm more along for the ride because of the platforming part of the genre title, and one thing to keep in mind when you're playing a cinematic platformer is that the controls actually do tie kind of directly into the difficulty. While a lot of platformers are floaty and basically let you have extreme precision in the air, that's not the case with cinematic platformers. Your character feels weighty, and animations take a while to complete, and your moves definitely aren't executed instantly. It takes some getting used to. It's like, imagine I took my 6 foot 2, 200 pound ass out of my room, and attempted to start climbing up ledges and over fences. I mean, yeah, it's gonna take a lot more than a button press to make that happen. But at least the main character doesn't insist on sitting down to enjoy a sandwich after the slightest bit of exertion. I would seriously be such a horrible main character. But anyways, my point still stands. Well, I'd eat most platformers for lunch for daring to implement controls that feel this sluggish, it ends up being an integral part of the experience in a cinematic platforming game. I remember playing Prince of Persia many, many years ago for a ton of hours just trying to perfect the timing of jumps over one obstacle or another, and that painful memory of my childhood flared up within the first 10 minutes of the Eternal Castle. Being crushed by a giant hanging object in the first couple of screens, about 10 times each, while I struggled to figure out the timing of the jump. You really don't get much vertical clearance, so timing is imperative. Maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself by addressing the gameplay before anything else, because the first thing that struck me upon booting up the Eternal Castle was the graphical style. Each screen features only a couple of colors, and stray pixels litter the screen which adds nicely to the retro aesthetic. While it's fairly common to see indie developers aping a retro style to capitalize on the nostalgia of us gamers, it's rarely committed to so heavily. 
The only further step that they could have possibly taken would be adding a CRT filter to remind us of those gigantic box-shaped televisions of years past. The gritty and raw experience of this game that seemingly fell out of a parallel dimension at some point during the 80s is strong. Even the music is mostly just synth pads and droning hums that seem really committed to maintaining the authenticity of the game's completely fabricated backstory. Despite my love for the extremely dark color palette, it doesn't come without its own set of problems. When all you can see of an enemy are their eyes, and you're somehow meant to stealth past them, it's like pretty utterly ridiculous. Somewhat of an exercise in futility, you know? You do get a few different guns, but none of them really seem to truly work properly. I guess it's a small blessing that in a pinch, you can simply blitz your way past the majority of obstacles in the game without needing to interact with them at all. It's functional, sure, but not exactly gratifying. The game could certainly have done with a bit more QA testing. Simply adding a gate to the end of the screen that is only unlocked once enemies are defeated or something could go a long way towards making the gameplay feel as satisfying as the aesthetic. Speaking of the aesthetic, the levels feel extremely disconnected. You'll find yourself stealthing through a graveyard, gunning your way through a forgotten city, and then meleeing things to death in some ancient ruins. These three levels build up to the final level where you put all the types of combat that you've learned to the test. None of the skills, guns, melee, or stealthing feel particularly satisfying to perfect. I mean, if perfection is even truly possible. I do really like the size and the scope of some of the bosses, but the gameplay and controls featured in Eternal Castle Remastered feel like they fall pretty flat compared to the majority of the visuals. The gameplay feels like it was hardly tested at all, and the visuals also have their share of troubles, like the aforementioned hardly being able to see anything that you're supposed to be stealthing past, and also massive frame rate drops. To be fair, we can technically call that a feature due to the game sort of being a relic from a past that exists outside the bounds of this reality, but it's a feature that certainly doesn't win any brownie points as far as I'm concerned. That isn't the only rub either. I've got a long list of complaints. If you're a fan of custom control schemes, you'll find yourself needing to rebind everything after a death. It's much less of a hassle to just deal with the control scheme that you're given, even if it doesn't feel quite right. Just put in the time, you'll adjust. Like most things in life, I guess. <laughs> While the Eternal Castle Remastered is admittedly somewhat of a mess, it's at least a relatively tiny mess. Four levels, which most people will roll through in around two to three hours. And if you're blitzing right to the end of the game, running past all those enemies and obstacles that I mentioned earlier, then the game can be wrapped up in just over an hour. There's also an extra chapter available once the game is completed, and a deathmatch arena mode, which doesn't really appeal to me considering the lackluster controls, melee, and gunplay. You probably won't be giving this one a second run unless you're intent on finding all of the available power-ups. But considering what a cakewalk this game was, even with the minimal power-ups that I managed to find, I don't really find that prospect too alluring either. Overall, the visual style of the Eternal Castle Remastered was the one and only thing that gripped me from the beginning to the end. The gameplay and even just the performance of the game left far too much to be desired for me to insist that anyone rush out and snap this one up. If you're a big fan of cinematic platformers, there's still plenty of competition on the Switch. Flashback, Another World, The Way Remastered, which actually The Way Remastered does have history from this plane of existence, these are all objectively better experiences, and I managed to pick each one of them up for, like, less than a dollar. So, if you can pick up the Eternal Castle for a very, very steep discount, then I'd say it might be worth swinging around for a couple of hours. I mean, the visual style really is something to behold, but that gameplay, oof, leaves a lot to be desired. And at a $15 price tag, yikes. Don't walk. RUN in the opposite direction. Luckily, 90% discounts for indie games are hardly unheard of for Switch titles, 
So if you see it for around a buck fifty, eh, why not add it to the steadily growing backlog that us gamers are so fond of cultivating for ourselves? So overall, the visual style and the audio work managed to drag me to the end of the Eternal Castle Remastered simply because I wanted to see what all the bosses and all the stages were like. The gameplay itself ended up being a bit of a struggle, but I think, again, that's largely due to it being a cinematic platformer. So the controls are sort of tied into the difficulty. And luckily, of course, there's nothing blocking you from just running past anything that you're having trouble with. But as I said, that's not a very gratifying way to get the game completed. The two-player deathmatch mode, unfortunately, I didn't get to try it out. However, considering the controls, I don't think that it would be better than a lot of other multiplayer games that uh, the Switch offers. The Lost Chapter, again, relatively decent, but it doesn't go above and beyond what's offered in, like, the first four stages of the game. So, if you could pick this game up for cheap, I'd say it's probably worth it. Definitely, definitely do not pay full price for this. <laughs> Please, I beg of you. Like I said, the game will only last two to three hours for most playthroughs, and you honestly probably won't feel the need to run through it again. You do get to select, like, a boy character or a girl character, but there's nothing different really about the gameplay or the ending should you select one gender over another overall it's a pretty interesting game i really do like the marketing gimmick like oh it's from a parallel dimension and we just got mandela affected into not remembering this title but it totally existed on this plane of existence like that's probably the most interesting thing about the game but the game itself leaves a lot to be desired much like most games from <laughs> the the late 80s early 90s do you know what i mean if you're judging it on that scale it's it's pretty good but compared to the offerings that we have in modern day gaming it it has a long way to go especially with the slowdowns and stuff like that i just i just can't hardly stand it it had to have been programmed that way and and why that would happen is just a complete mystery to me i find it quite frustrating but again, the frustration is part of the charm. Uh, a lot of people out there seem to like it. It didn't exactly vibe with me. Although, like I said, the visual style is pretty cool. The gameplay just, just doesn't make me want to dive in for a round two. But anyways, I think that about wraps it. Uh, that's how I feel about the Eternal Castle remastered. No holes barred. If you guys have seen this, played it, heard of it, let me know what you thought about it. If you haven't seen it, played it, heard of it, you can also let me know what you thought about it. I'd appreciate that. Uh, anybody that wants to like, comment, subscribe, you get a real MVPs. We've also got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. My massively amazing MVPs, those patrons. We've got Just Austin, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radim Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OG nico the legend i appreciate you guys so much for helping me live the dream i appreciate anybody who sat down to watch this review i know it's uh outside the realm of bundle stuff that we usually do or maybe not i mean we review games in the bundles this is just like a review on one game that's uh, a bit more in depth than the one paragraph that i say about most of the bundle stuffs but still i hope you enjoyed it I'm going to catch you guys a bit later. Um, taking a break from bundles for now, I think. It's uh, a lot of work. I know there's been some cool stuff floating around, but I got some other stuff that I want to concentrate on right now as well. So I hope you guys will understand. Support regardless. I definitely appreciate everybody that's uh, giving me words of encouragement. I really do want to sit down, do like a little parody song or a rap video kind of shortly here. So... That'll be interesting and different, and I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed it at all. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. Thank you once again, as always, for watching. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. This has been a Dayton Dissects of the Eternal Castle Remastered. Solid 4 out of 10. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.